All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Doug C. Brown, who is in New Hampshire. How are you doing, Doug? I'm doing awesome, John. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and Doug's a highly acclaimed sales revenue growth expert, consultant, author, and speaker. And what we're going to talk about today is optimizing the sales process. And here's, so going into a new year, as a lot of people are in terms of like fiscal new year, uh, quotas have been handed out, plans are being set. One of the things that tends to be overlooked slightly though is the sales process because sometimes people get lazy about their sales process and they think, oh, okay, we have a sales process and it works okay. But the reality is sales processes should be dynamic and you should be looking at it all the time because it should reflect your buyer or your target market. And perhaps that's changed this year. Perhaps your buyer behavior has changed. Perhaps your target market has, has changed. Therefore, your sales process has to change. So, so Doug, going, going into the new year, how would you advise people to assess where they are with their sales process right now? Well, I think the, the first thing you, you said, John, was, look, you know, everything's fluid at this point and maybe buyer and target markets have changed, right? So firstly, mm -hmm. let's get very truthful about where we want to go in 2021. Um, you know, not fictitious growth, not, hey, I think I want to get there, but concrete truth. Because if you don't have the commitment of the, the people within that, you know, the process and you design a fantastic process, but, you know, nobody nobody uh, actually fulfills that, then, then they'll fall short. Um, so once we get clear on the truth uh, and we're very clear on the goals, second thing would be to assess whether or not they can actually grow to that level or not. And, you know, it could be process that could be a challenge. It could be the skills of certain people in the organization. It could be the people themselves. Sometimes, you know, people are in wrong positions. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they're smart uh, you know, nice people, but they're, you know, in sales, particularly a lot of companies are, are looking for, you know, people who can go outbound and not everybody yeah. is, is built that way. So they, they want to start with the baseline and assess that. And once they figure that component out, then, you know, growing from that component is really all about what I call massive prospecting. Mm -hmm. so, um, let me just hone in on a couple of things you said there that I think are really important that I want to underline. And that's the, f the first thing is that, is that you need to look at sales process uh, on, on many different levels. You need to look at it overall, right? So maybe you look at it from the team perspective. How does the team operate within the sales process? You, need, you can look at it uh, individually. How do individuals um, you can look at it from product lines. There are so many different ways you can look at it and glean information. Like in, in Pipeline CRM, we have a thing called the archive where every deal that's lost, you can just have it in the archive and it's exactly where it stood in the sales process. So you can do analytics on it. And it's amazing how much you can learn when you look back at your sales process on many different levels. As I said, you can look at your team and you can say, wow, things seem to struggle at you know, stage four here. What's going on there that I need to fix on a, on, a, on a macro level? And then you can drill down on somebody and say, well, John seems to be great. He's fantastic. He seems to be great in the early stages, gets loads of things into the pipeline, qualifies and everything, but he's, it seems a lot to fall away. So perhaps he has a closing issue there that needs to be solved. Yeah, and a lot, and a lot of companies are, are, are I, I would say, lax about mm -hmm. the coaching process. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's usually not the macro issues that are the huge problems. It's usually a series of micro issues. Yeah. So when they're measuring their metrics, like you're, you're, you know, the pipeliner does, and they're looking at each stage of those metrics, those, that, those metrics and that's, those stages will tell, tell a story. And so, you know, again, I mean, if somebody can highly qualify, just as you uh, depicted, that person could, and their close rate's not really that high. Well, we can make uh, you know a deducement of of information and 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 say, okay, great. Maybe this person now needs some training in in and around that area. Yeah. Or alternatively, maybe we need to segment our 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 team and say, okay, hey, Doug, he's a fantastic closer. Not the greatest at uh, at opening doors or getting uh, getting uh, opportunities started off or qualified, but he's fantastic once it's in the process. So maybe teaming. Maybe John opens the door and Doug Doug closes the business. 
without question and and you know that same individual might be really good at post sales because if he's yeah. able to right so sometimes it's about adjusting the people and and putting them in their you know as as the old book says put them in the right seat on the right bus yeah. right and I think the other thing that people overlook about sales process is because research has shown clearly, I mean, ZS Associates have done research on this, McKinsey have done research on this, but the sales, the sales organizations that are the most successful are the ones who have a clear sales process, but have clear steps within those sales processes and enforce them. Without question, because it's duplicatable, number one. And it's consistent, so one can measure against, it's not subjective anymore, it's objective. So it's like, look, here's the process, the process works. Now, if there's people not hitting quota or people not doing what we want them to do, it's very clear to start seeing where this is all going to play out. And for your clients, the customer journey, they're gonna have a consistent experience with your company. So there won't be just one person that they love and the other people that they don't like uh, and, you know, which is problematic for the company retention. Yeah. And I think part of the problem is that people sometimes think, well, it's great having this process and everything, but you know, sales, it's, it's kind of more of an art and I don't like to be hindered by this process. And, uh, and I'd be the first one to say that if a process doesn't help you, it's not a good process, right? If it doesn't make things more efficient. Um, however, to your point is if you get your process right, uh, the consistency of execution and the consistency of experience is critical, especially because if you're in B2B sales, there's a lot more people involved in the buying decision. And quite frankly, you're not always going to be the only person from your company involved in it either. So to your point, you need to have some consistent experience and have elegant handoffs. Yeah, without question. And, and the, the handoffs have to be consistent as well with the customer experience that everybody wants. And, you know, this also makes uh, the, the, the chief financial officer and other people very happy because they'll have predictable budgets at that point. You know, most CEOs tell me one of the biggest challenges and biggest pain points is they can't get accurate sales force cast, so they can't have accurate budgets. And, and that is traced back a lot of times to not having a sales process. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think then, you know, then if you have a lack sales process or no sales process at all or whatever, it's a great way of, you know, being humans, it's a great way of making excuses because, uh, you know, you can come up with any excuse you want and why, you know, sales didn't, uh, didn't um, progress. But to your point earlier, if you've nothing to measure it against, uh, that's fine. That's fine. You can probably get away with that. But if you have a rigorous sales process, you can go back and, and as manager in coaching, you can go back and say, let's look at how the process unfolded and maybe the no deal, was the legitimate result of it, or maybe we missed some steps in the process that if we had executed, we'd had a better chance of closing. Yes. It, it, and, and the thing is, is about having a consistent sales process. It's easy to do that without process. Then if we're relying on people skills, which is fine, um, it's just not optimum. So if, if one wants to optimize and one wants to scale their business, that's the other mm -hmm. thing about having a process. If they want to scale, they must have a consistent, replicatable, duplicatable process. Yeah. And then, then to that point, I mean, if you're going to onboard, you're going to hire people or whatever, I mean, you need to, you, you know, the time to, to productivity is always a challenge with salespeople anyway, but if you have no sales process and no track to run on, it's going to be even more difficult. Well, and you'll have eight players that come to your company and they'll, they'll wash out because there's no process there and they, they can see that they're not going to make the consistent upward income that they're looking to make. Yeah. And I think the other thing too is, I mean, there's a huge onus on managers here is in that, like there's one thing me saying, okay, Doug, here's the sales process. I want you to follow and teaching you it and all that. But if I never refer to it again, if I never went on coaching you or managing, say like, let's look at this step in the process, how we execute it. What, what the message I'm sending to you is, yeah, sense process doesn't really matter. He doesn't care about it. Why should I? The old adage that, you know, people respect what you inspect, right? Yeah. So I'm in full agreement with you. And, and, and frankly, if you have a sales process, that's wonderful. If you have a sales process without continuous coaching or consistent coaching, and that doesn't mean, hey, we meet once a week, mm. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, just, yeah. that's not a manager's job. A manager's job, a high amount of a manager's job should be coaching 
the the team. And if you, if that's lacking, then that's a breakdown in your process. Yeah, and there, and as I said, there's the onus on the sales manager because he is the one who should he or she or uh, they should be looking at the sales process, how it's been executed, and they should be coaching according to it on a regular basis, and 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 examining it and looking at it. As I said, from a team point of view, individual point of view, all of that, because the insights that it can give you is incredible. Because it's a lot more focused a a coaching session, Doug, isn't it? If I can actually pinpoint in a sales process where I think you may be hitting some some roadblocks and actually help you overcome them yeah because the blind spots you know in those roadblocks that you're speaking about i mean they're, they're blind spots so it's hard to see mm -hmm. them it won't especially if the sales representative is in the game every single day just doing it uh it's hard you know it's a lot easier to see from the outside than the inside and that's a big part of coaching success yeah and as you know i mean one of the things that uh, a lot of sales coaches and stuff love to do is, you know, do the ride along with the salesperson, right? You know, and examine how they go. Well, the reality is you're, if you're looking at the sales process, it is a virtual ride along if you have a well-defined sales process and you can actually see what's happening in the deal as it goes, you can actually pretty much follow along and see what's happening. So again, it's, it's like a virtual ride along tool as well. Oh, it's, um... You know, I, I compare it, John, to lead scoring, right? People will mm -hmm. lead score their leads uh, on the marketing side, but, yeah. they, but they lack a lead scoring process on their sales process. <laughs> and so, you know, if they had a very uh, well-defined lead scoring process on that particular sales process, they could spot those things that you're talking about very quickly and, and you can pivot and be very nimble. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is, and I, and I think that's where the great uh, misconception about sales process comes in, is the exact word that you just said there is the fact that you can be nimble, you can pivot quickly and all that. Uh, a lot of people will immediately say, oh, no, process bogs you down, slot, you know, that way you can't pivot, you can't turn quickly on it. But it's precisely the opposite when it's done properly. Without question. And, and if we look at the, you know, some of the best running companies, even in the delivery, they, they, they look at their operations process as a sales process too. I mean, mm -hmm. you go through, you know, any, I mean, McDonald's, I don't eat there uh, anymore, but you know, you go through there every single time you go through one company like that, they're going to ask you, do you want to, you know, upsize this biggie size sure. this? I mean, they're mm -hmm. upselling, they're cross selling, they're doing it right there, but it's, they're doing it with teenagers. Right. Yeah. So, and, and so this is how if you, one has a, a well-defined process, they can increase their revenues and a process doesn't rely solely on skill. So if you have great skilled people, it's better. But yeah. But I mean, that's again. And the other part of it is actually if you follow the process, it takes away some of the it's it takes away some of the things that you might normally have to focus on it actually allows you to focus on the high more high level um activities that you want to do where you can really bring value to things i mean i think that's part of it because otherwise you're you're kind of making it up as you go along or you're kind of haphazardly trying to take care of things but if it's laid out there clearly and you follow that process it means then you can focus on where you create the value yeah, and you can absolutely you focus on the value for the client and for the value of the organization itself in expanding sales. So, mm -hmm. you know, things like referrals, that should be built in proactively into the process. Yeah, and why, and just and one last question for you, Doug, and this could be a whole other session. Maybe we'll come back and talk about it someday. But in that whole issue around referrals, why is it today, we all know, instinctively and uh, logically that referrals are like the best thing you can get customer referrals get you into other places it's fantastic however it's still something that very few people do very well um some sales people kind of avoid doing or do it in a cursory manner like sort of mm -hmm. oh, i've sold something to you doug i'll just send you a quick email and say hey doug could you uh, do you know anybody else who could use this you come back and you say not off the top of my head and that's it i've done it I asked for the referral, it didn't get one, never works, so on I go. <laughs> oh, how true you just <laughs> depicted. <laughs> so, you know, the reason that for most people that that doesn't work, again, goes back to process, right? There's no, they're having a reactive process to uh, gaining referrals versus a proactive systematic process. 
and the because there's no process, there's nothing being measured, right? It's or yeah. it's being measured reactively. Oh, this person got four referrals this month. This person got two. This person got ten. Right. So there's no quota on referrals, and so inevitably, when we come into companies and we we help them with this and we install processes like this, all of a sudden they start amazingly getting more and more and more consistent referral work. And it's, you know, it's, <laughs> but, and uh, I guess, you know, the last thing is, is that without a process, then personality is going to play into this. And then those people who don't re like rejection or feel like they, they're not supposed to interrupt somebody in whatever capacity, they're going to be uh, less uh, available, if you will, in asking for a referral. And, and most of the time, if we've done a great job and we just ask a very simple question, we will get a referral. Yeah, and, and I think that's it. I think some people, if you leave it to their own devices, uh, and some people just, you know, they have this strange thing about, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to ask for something. And even when, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, you've just sold, everybody's happy, blah, blah, blah. It's the best time to do it. And they go, yeah but I just don't want to introduce something else into the equation. And, and there's lots of excuse. But as, as you say, if you have a KPI on it, if it's something that you measure, if it's something that's built into your process, then that goes away. Right. Because there's no excuse at that point, because that's what we do here. Right. So yeah. um, ab absolutely. And, and, and so anybody can build in a quick process and on and around referrals. I mean, we have to develop a referral mindset on this whole process and then mm -hmm. start putting in strategic places and have the follow-up in there that actually helps with the, 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 the process. It's crazy not to do referrals, John, because a salesperson's job, by nature, they want to make a lot of money and work as yeah. little as possible. <laughs> so yeah. this, this achieves it for them. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, this has been great, Doug. Great advice for people. Go look at your sales process. If you don't have one, then really, I mean, now's the time to go make sure you uh, create one. But don't but don't just create one, then make sure it's an efficient one, make sure it's mapped to your buyers and markets that you're involved in, make sure you review it constantly, and then make sure that it's detailed, it's not too, it's not own, overly onerous, but it's detailed enough where you can do what we're talking about, where you can measure and track everything that happens and give people a track to run on. Uh, all of Doug's information will be below this video, but before we go, Doug, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, well, I, I do exactly what we're talking about doing. I, I help companies actually grow their revenues. And a lot of times it's going back in and, and finding the blind spots and fixing those, those micro areas, uh, as well as, you know, part of that process is also training sales teams because there needs to be that repeatable, duplicatable process. So that's what I do. Excellent. All right. Well, listen, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thanks again, Doug. Thank Bye you, now. John.